To end off our unit, I wanted to circle back to remind you that the biodome really is based around a real place, Biosphere 2 in Arizona. I want to leave you with this short video to show what this biosphere is being used for currently and how they used the failed experiment to still drive forward with figuring out more about how ecosystems work. I am so proud of all the work that you have done this year, and I'm so excited to read your final thoughts. I'm proud to be your teacher, and I know that your teachers are also proud to be your teachers if you're not one of my students. I'm so excited for you to keep working on science, to keep being curious and figuring things out for yourselves. You guys are awesome, and I am so sad that I can't be here in person to finish off this year with you, but I hope that you have learned some things over the last few weeks of our closure. See you next year. Bye-bye. So today at Biosphere 2, uh, our visitors come inside and they get to see all the biomes up close and personal. And that lets us uh, save money on the energy cost of keeping a closed system, but it also lets us take parts of Biosphere 2 to close it off when we need to do research, for example, in the rainforest or with our Landscape Evolution Observatory. I'm Ty Taylor. I'm a scientist at Biosphere 2. This is the rainforest biome, which is like a model of a natural tropical forest. But in this model, we can actually control the climate, which is something you can't do in the natural world. Okay, Steve, can we get some rain in the northeast quadrant, please? For northeast, overhead quadrant, ready to go. We can make rainfall, we can put the forest through drought, and we can raise temperatures to simulate what a hotter world might look like. In my research here, I help to answer one of the big scientific questions of our time, which is how tropical forests will respond to a warming climate. During photosynthesis, leaves exchange molecules between the leaf and the atmosphere. In the rainforest biome, we can seal off this tropical forest, and that way we can monitor the coming and going of all of the molecules through the forest. This helps us understand how the forest will interact with the climate. We can measure how a whole ecosystem responds to changing climate. When the Biospherians lived inside, they had a farm space where they grew their food crops. Today, we're using that farm space to run our institutional experiment, studying water. For 10 years, we'll learn everything about how water interacts with a complex landscape and how water, plants, and soil move carbon and energy in a hotter, drier world. My name is Aditi Sengupta. I study soil microbes, and today I'm gonna to take some soil cores from the Landscape Evolution Observatory. So once I have the soil samples, I'm going to take them back to my lab and then I'm going to analyze them for all the kind of different microbes that I can find in there. The challenge out in the real world is you have all of these uncontrolled variables that you don't exactly know what is driving the system. And what we can do here at a really big scale is we can control those variables but still see systems operating at scales that are more realistic than what you find in a small laboratory.